You've started cycling and you're interested in progressing to a dedicated cycling shoe, but you're unsure what the benefits of shoes like this are and you're confused by all the different types. Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm gonna explain all of that so that you can best decide what suits your needs. Like many sports, football, running, ice skating, cycling has dedicated footwear that can enhance your experience of that sport. This is my cycling shoe and the main area in which it differs from a normal trainer or sneaker if you're American uh, is that the sole is very very stiff it doesn't bend like if I try and bend it it's just won't budge at all. In addition, the upper of the shoe is tight and secure and is designed to really encapsulate your foot and hold it solid. A bit like a football boot or soccer boot if you needed that translation, sorry. There's also holes in the bottom of cycling shoes and these are so that you can attach your cleats which correspond to the pedals that you're gonna be clipping into. Why are cycling shoes like this? Well, the thinking is that they help you pedal more efficiently. And by not having to bend and compress a squidgy sole, you're not wasting any energy. Plus, having a nice secure shoe on helps you feel more engaged with the pedal stroke. Also, by being clipped in, you can pull up on the pedal stroke as well as push down. And this is useful for engaging other muscles such as your hamstrings, glutes, and hip flexors. This is especially handy when riding out of the saddle, up steep climbs, or sprinting. I'm now gonna cycle through the different kinds of shoes. But before I do, I'm just gonna put a hat on because my COVID Lockdown hair keeps getting in my face and it's annoying me. Anyway, shoes fall broadly into two different categories. Shoes that are for the road, and shoes that are for off-road. Now the difference between these is that off-road shoes, like this, are also designed to be walked in as well as cycled in. Consequently, they have a more uh, built-up sole on the underside and they also are designed to use a two-bolt cleat system. Off-road cleats like this are better at clearing mud than road cleats. Road shoes are designed to be used with road pedals. I know I sound like Captain Obvious, but bear with me. And also, if you take road shoes off-road, these pedal systems will get clogged with dirt easily. They're not designed for that. But they do give a greater contact patch and surface area between the shoe and the pedal system. And this means you have a greater feeling of engagement and more comfort. Road shoes are typically much lighter than their off-road counterparts, but they're not really designed to be walked in, although walking a few meters at the cafe stop is absolutely fine. But the more you walk in them, be aware you will wear out the cleats on the bottom. Talking of which, they typically have three holes on the bottom of the shoe to attach the cleat on a road shoe compared to two on an off-road shoe. Here you can see a shoe with no cleat attached, the three empty holes, and here's a sole with the cleat attached. Note the three bolts. I don't have any here, but some shoe designs, such as Northwave, actually incorporate both a three bolt cleat system and a two bolt cleat system into the sole of the shoe, so you can use either. If you're gonna be doing performance road cycling, such as entering sportives, big grand fondos, or maybe even races, then I'd recommend a road shoe as the way to go. However, if you're gonna be riding off-road, maybe doing some cyclocross, or you know, perhaps just mixed surface riding where you're riding on tarmac some of the time, but then other surfaces like, say, gravel, then an off-road shoe would be my choice and what I would recommend you get. Something else to bear in mind is that off-road shoes are very popular for commuting, especially if your commute involves any significant amount of walking at any point in it, in addition to the cycling. But I wouldn't stress too much about it because if you fall in love with the sport, which is pretty easy to do, let me tell you, then you'll probably end up just getting both. I'm now gonna go into more detail about different subcategories of shoes, the different features you can get on them, and then I'm gonna explain about different price points and what you can typically expect. So first up, these are my Physique Infinito X1s. They're an off-road shoe designed for cyclocross, uh, cross-country mountain biking, or gravel riding as well. I used these in the Rift gravel race in Iceland. 
But in addition to shoes like this, you can also get off-road shoes that are kind of really built up, a bit like a kind of walking boot like this. These have a membrane in them to keep your foot nice and dry and warm, and they're also designed to be walked in. These are great for deep winter riding as they effectively combine uh, an overshoe cover that you would add onto these other shoes uh, built in to the existing shoe. And some mountain bikers, like our friends over on GMBN, often like a flat soled shoe that they can use on flat pedals as well. If you're thinking that you might do some triathlons in the future, then a triathlon specific shoe would be a really good way to go as Generally speaking, they're absolutely fine to be used as normal road shoes. Unfortunately, I don't have one here that I can show you in my hands, as my tricurious phase ended a long time ago. But here are some images of our friends at GTN using theirs. The main difference between a triathlon specific shoe and a road shoe is that the triathlon shoes are designed to be put on and taken off while you're on the bike to make transition between the different disciplines as fast as possible. They might also have a few holes in the bottom that are designed to help water drip through from the swim. What about fastening systems then? Well, cycling shoes have loads of different types, starting with Velcro, which is relatively inexpensive, and very simple to use. It's also pretty robust. Next up, you have Boa dials, and well, other makes of dials as well, but Boa are the most common. And these are great because they allow for little millimeter increments of adjustment. Each time you click that dial, it adjusts the cable by one millimeter as it pulls it in, which means you can really fine tune your fit and get it spot on. You also get ratchets on shoes. These are kind of lighter weight versions of the ratchets that you'd get on say a ski boot, if you've ever you know, used a ski boot. But these are less common these days. They used to be really common about five years ago. And the next really popular closure system on shoes is laces, like on these Giros. Now, laces have the advantage that they're really lightweight and they look cool, in my opinion, others. They kind of have this retro aesthetic. The disadvantage of them is that you can't adjust them easily while riding along on the fly, something you can do with boa dials and Velcro straps. And if you're wondering about laces getting caught in your pedals as you pedal along, well, that's not a problem with the cycling shoes because they're much like football boots designed to have the laces tucked in specially out of the way so they're nice and tight and secure when you do them up. So what can you expect at different price points? What do you get for your money throughout you know, different levels of shoe? Well, like with many things in cycling, the more you spend, the stiffer and more lightweight the component becomes, and shoes are exactly like that. So if we start entry level, you can pick up an entry level pair of shoes, much like these, for as little as 30 or 50 pounds, euros or dollars if you go to a shop like Decathlon. And what you're gonna get is usually a shoe with Velcro closures on it, because Velcro is the most sort of cost-effective thing, but you do find Velcro on some really high-end shoes as well, because it is pretty lightweight as well. Now, on the bottom of the shoe, the sole is likely to be plastic or fiberglass, as this is a little bit heavier, less stiff, but less expensive than a carbon fiber sole you'll get on more expensive shoes. Also note on these shoes, you've actually got the two bolt and three bolt cleat system on there as well, which is quite nice. So it means you could put either a road or an off-road cleat on there. Now, if you spend a little bit more than that, then brands like Shimano have some excellent entry-level shoes as well, below 100 pounds. On to mid-level shoes, which I would categorize as being around sort of 90 to 150 pounds, euros or dollars kind of price point, really popular price point. And you get something like, well, my Physique R5 power straps I've got here. The soles have usually moved on from being just plastic to some kind of composite material, like these are a carbon composite sole, which is a bit lighter and a bit stiffer than a normal plastic sole. Now, manufacturers of shoes claim that a stiffer sole is 
more efficient when you're pedaling along. It certainly does feel that way, but a lot of people do dispute this fact, so that's worth pointing out. Now at this price point, you get all ranges of closure systems as well. So Velcro, like on these, but you also get ratchets, uh, dials and laces too. Something else to point out is that mid-level shoes have a noticeably higher quality of construction and you know the quality of the materials used is a, is a noticeable step up from a lot of entry-level shoes. This is something that's also noticeable in the next kind of rung, which is your top-end shoes. Top end shoes like this, you know, you're talking 150 pounds upwards and they can get very expensive indeed. But these are the best of the best. They're what pro riders in the Tour de France will use when they're storming up mountains. They have the, the highest quality uh, of construction in terms of materials um, used on them as well. And the soles are typically made of the stiffest carbon fiber available. Now, really stiff soles, isn't something that's particularly relevant to me, if I'm honest, I'm not the most powerful sprinter in the world, but I'm reliably informed by people who are powerful sprinters that having a stiff sole that doesn't bend when they're really hammering out the watts is something that's really important to them. However, something that is important to me is weight. And you know, I like to have as much help as I can and the more expensive the shoe, as I've said before, the lighter they get. So shoes like this are typically lighter than a mid-level shoe. Something else to consider is your choice of upper material as well. Now, I'm quite a simple traditional guy, I like a nice sort of plain sort of white upper that's very easy to wipe down as this means you can keep it clean if it does get some dirt splashed on there which trust me will happen even if you're riding in dry conditions if you're going to be riding off-road a lot and i'd say go for a black shoe because a nice pair of white off-road shoes will look great for about five minutes and then they will get covered in mud so just something to bear in mind now in terms of finding the right size for you i would recommend you go to your local bike shop and you try some on because it's just like with normal shoes, you know, you want to try them on because everyone fits their shoes differently and different brands suit different people better or worse. It's one of the reasons why you actually see a lot of pros not tied down by a team shoe sponsor because they want to pick ones that really suit them because it is such an individual thing. So I'd recommend doing that. And also, if you do go to your shop and try a load on and you find a pair that you love, Buy them from the shop, support your local bike shop. Don't blum in, try them on in the shop and then go buy them online. Not cool. Right, I hope you found this video useful and informative. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as it helps support the channel and what we do. And if you've got any questions that we haven't answered in the vid, then let us know in the comments section and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible. Also, if you're interested about the different kinds of pedal systems, so road pedals and off-road pedals, then we've got a video that goes into all the detail of the differences between those. We'll put a link on screen now.